few weeks ago, the week before the Thanksgiving holidays, I was in Orlando on business, and I got a phone call from my sister. And my sister and I were never very close, because she was six years apart, and that's another time for another story. But what she called about was, you have to go home. You have to see your mother. She's on her final days. The next day, I got the call that said she's passed away. So I made the arrangements to go home and flew from Atlanta to Baltimore and drove home. But as I went into the funeral, I realized that funerals are a time to remember. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and guests. Funerals are not for those who have passed away. It's for us, the living. Because it's at that moment when you see friends that you haven't seen for years, you begin to remember the things that you may have forgotten about or truly wished you had forgotten about. <laughs> because in my case, I was the son who, when I called, was very vexing for my mother. I was the one who challenged her, who would be the one who would call from the police station. And those are the memories that came flooding back. Not the things that I did well or the, the good things I did, but it's the pranks that I pulled, the trouble that I caused my mother. When I was in Going way back. When I was in high school, going to class was not high on my list. Other things were high on my list. But I found that my mother would write me a permission slip if I told her that I cut school to go to Sharpsburg, Maryland, a few miles away, 60, because that's where Antietam Battlefield was. So I would sell her on the historical merits of me going there. The history was not what we had in mind. Other things. I can remember being pulled over by the police, state police, happened to be a friend of my father's, and I had just left a place called the Democrat Club. I'm not a Democrat nor am I a Republican, but it was a bar. <laughs> it was quite popular. In those days, drinking and driving was not the issue it is today. However, the police officer followed me home, gave me a stern warning, and right before he left at 4 o'clock in the morning, hits the lights and lights up the neighborhood and breaks the sound with his siren. So now I would have rather, at this point, I would rather have gone to jail <laughs> because I have to face my mother and my father and stand tall for what I've done and reap those consequences. I can remember calling my mother after I'd been kicked out of public high school and shipped off to private school. I was trespassing and got shot in the butt with rock salt. It was not all that fun. But I called home for sympathy. Their words, one question. Were you supposed to be there? <laughs> well, well, you know, no, no, cut the crap. Were you supposed to be there? Not exactly. <laughs> so that's all we want to hear about the subject. They believed that if you're going to dance, you stand tall and pay the piper. And I danced a lot. I can remember calling home when I was in Wyoming. And I had no job, no friends, no family. And I've shared that story a number of times. But they were an encouragement to stay and give it a shot because they would always be there for me.
My parents were always there for me, especially my mother. But I was not always the son she had asked for, because I was not always there with her. The last time I had seen my mother was 12 years ago. So it was 12 years, I talked to her once or twice by phone. And those are the memories that flooded my memories as I thought about what I should have and could have done. And a quote came to mind. Have you seen the bucket list? Morgan Friedman has a quote in there. And it's the Egyptians have a very beautiful belief when it comes to dying. When you reach heaven's gate, you'll be asked two questions. Did you find joy in your life? Did you bring joy to others? My mom will pass through those gates. As it stands today, it will be a challenge for me. So thank you all. Mm -hmm.